بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين المبعوث رحمة للعالمين وشفيع المذنبين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وحبيب إله العالمين المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين لا سيما بضعته الطاهرة فاطمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين من الأولين والآخرين واللعن الدائم على أعدائهم أجمعين إلى قيام يوم الدين قال الله سبحانه وتعالى وقل اعملوا فسير الله عملكم ورسوله والمؤمنون صدق الله العلي العظيم Well, it is a night of martyrdom of Fatima al-Zahra sallallahu alayha according to the third time because the first time is said that she, she died 40 days after death of the Prophet and the second ruwaya said it was 75 days and the third one is 70 95 days and it is really astonishing that how daughter of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam dies and that was a great news among the Muslims still they do not know at which time she has died there are some ahadith they said six months even after the Prophet and some said in Ramadan month, and so on. So many ahadith are there. However, usually, this, the third ruaya is the, practically people take majalis, and sometimes the second ruaya, that ruaya of 75 days. The story of Fatima al Zahra is not really mentioned much in the books, only in short. And when it is short, sometimes the people will get astonished. That is it possible that they come and take Imam Ali from the house easily and then they take bay'at from him without any discussion, without any negotiation, without any argument. But if we go into details of what happened, we see, no, it was not that easy. It was not that easy because after they did bayat in Saqifa, then Imam Ali السلام, and Bani Hashim were at home and they refused to do bayat with Abi Bakr. Well, it was a plan that they will kill, how we call it nowadays, political eradication. They kill the supporters and the sincere followers of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And they were Abu Dhar and Salman and Ammar. So in the history is mentioned that one day Salman and Abu Dhar were afraid that at night they will attack their house and they will kill them. And they said, we don't know who killed them. You see, when the army is controlling the Medina, in that situation, naturally, will not be easy to control the things. And they were roaming around without sleeping at home around the roads of Medina. But then ultimately said, where will we spend the night? Not possible. Maybe the best and safest place is to come and stay with Imam Ali at his house. So they came to house of Imam Ali alayhi salam. And also Zubair was 
feeling because if he was caught out, they will force him to do bay'at with Abu Bakr. And he do not want to do bay'at. He came to house of Imam Ali. Miqdad and Ammar, the same case. So they were at all at house of Imam Ali and they rejected the bay'at. Now only this story, if we say, if so many important and sincere and honest Sahaba, including Imam Ali السلام, and Fatima al Zahra, they reject Bay'at of Abu Bakr and do not recognize him as a caliphate, then why they say no, every Muslim should accept that? Why? If somebody wants to accept it, it's up to him. But if I follow Imam Ali and I follow Fatima al Zahra and I follow those great Sahabas like Salman and Ammar and Maghdad and Abu Dhar and similar Sahaba were great and their position is known very high among the Muslims and say I'm following these Sahaba they did not do bayat I don't want to recognize that whoever want to recognize is up to him then why say no you should it is a must why it is a must it is not a must however it was not only that, but then Abu Bakr realized Imam Ali is trying to have supporters. And they know if he got supporters to support him, he will take a stand, and that is risky for them at any time. So that is why Omar said to Abu Bakr that I will not feel comfortable till those who are at this house, and he pointed to house of Imam Ali السلام, and Fatima al Zahra, they should come and do bay'at. Abu Bakr said, Well, as long as they are not fighting, I will not care, even if it is closed in a state of war against us. Omar insisted. He said, Okay, send somebody. They have sent one person, one delegate, and he said to Imam Ali that, Come, the Caliph of the Prophet is calling you. Imam Ali السلام, replied from behind the door, not, he did not come out, did not come out, and from, he said, well, uh, the Holy Prophet died, and he did not appoint him as a caliph, so how come he claimed to be a caliph? Then he returned back, and he said, well, Imam Ali refused to come out. They sent a second one, that come and reply the caliph who is in the mosque. He said, well, I don't want to come and I am busy to collect the Holy Quran. And it is known in the history that Imam Ali السلام, was the first one to collect the Holy Quran. He collected all papers and all uh, pieces of wood or bones or whatever uh, things with the Holy Quran was written, collected it all, and brought it, but they refused. They said, no, we don't want it. However, that is another story. And then, third time, Qunfud came. Qunfud was a slave to Adi, the tribe of Omar, and he was very sincere to Omar, and was very rude person. So Omar sent him, and he also knock the door. Now Fatima to Zahra alayha, replied. And she said, what do you want from us? You know, we are at home. And why every time you are creating problems? Because Fatima to Zahra's sound was there, the people who were with Qunfud, they started crying and they returned back. They said, this is a sacred house. How can we enter the house without permission? So again, they found the people are not cooperative. So here, Abu Bakr and Omar send a message to Khalid ibn al-Walid that come, we have something important for you. Khalid ibn al-Walid came, and Khalid ibn al-Walid hate Imam Ali throughout his history. From the time of Uhud, when Khalid ibn al-Walid was nearly to be victorious, and Imam Ali defended the Holy Prophet, and then the army ran away, army of Quraysh ran away, and it was, and 
uh, with the leadership of Khalid ibn al-Walid. Also, Khalid ibn al-Walid, when he went to Yemen, and some the tribes, he called them to Islam, they came and declared Islam. But because he has enmity against them from time of Jahiliyyah, they killed one of his a tribe. So he said, no, your Islam is not accepted. And you say Islam by tongue, and he killed them. So the news came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Holy Prophet said, Allahumma inni abraw ilayka min fa'li Khalid. Oh Allah, I take immunity with you from what Khalid has did. Means I do not accept what Khalid has did. And then the Prophet sent Imam Ali alayhi salam with a great number of sheep and camels in order to pay the ransom for the people who were killed. And then told them that when Imam Ali comes, then leader of the army will be Imam Ali, not Khalid ibn al-Walid. Imam Ali alayhi salam came to those people and he uh, regretted for what happened and he said the Prophet do not agree with that and what Khalid did is wrong. If you declared Islam, he has no right to kill you. But he thought, I mean, let us say he claimed apparently uh, that he did not accept your Islam and he thought it is his duty. So now what is ransom to be given to you? They said, okay, we'll accept you now if the Prophet is not happy with what Khalid ibn al-Walid has done, will accept whatever ransom is given. So there was a number, special number of uh, sheep or camels to be given for each person who is killed, what we call diya in the Islamic fiqh. Imam Ali gave them all the diya and then more remained with him. So he said, maybe you feel that it is not much, I'll give you a little more additional to your rights. So he gave them and they were naturally happy to get more than what they used to expect. And then still remained with him some of the goats and sheep. He said, I will give you in order to be pleased with the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. لِتَرْضَوْ عَنَ رَسُولِ To be satisfied about the Prophet, the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said, unanimously, رضينا عن رسول الله. We are pleased with Rasulullah. That is very nice and gentle way of a treatment with us. And he treated what mistake was done by Khalid. When they returned back, Imam Ali had one of the she slave, and he married her there. Khalid sent someone as a messenger to Medina that go and tell the Prophet that look, Imam Ali married one of slaves there, she slave, so that he thought the Prophet will be angry because Imam Ali is his son-in-law, and how come he married with a, a she slave there? So that is not possible. When that person came to Medina before the army all comes from Yemen, he came alone. Khalid ibn Wali sent him. The Holy Prophet, when he heard, was very angry with that person. He said, be careful to hate Imam Ali. If you are hating Imam Ali, then you are not on the right path. So he started shivering. He said, I take refuge with you, O the Messenger of Allah, from your anger. I didn't know to talk that will, will hurt you. He said, don't talk against Ali anymore. It's very uh, dangerous for your future to talk about Imam Ali. So Khalid had that hate against Imam Ali. Well, that is a long procedure. So here Abu Bakr and Omar sent to Khalid and they told him, we have something important to tell you, and uh, responsibility. He said, give me any responsibility, even if it is killing Imam Ali. They said, we do not want something else except this one. Imam Ali is not coming out from home and is not pledge, pledging allegiance with Abu Bakr and you want to force him. So Khalid and Omar and well many soldiers came. Some said there were many on horse, you know, soldiers not only walking and according to some historians, a thousand horse were around the house 
So it looks, was not an ordinary case. Not only five people came, you know, because they were prepared for war. They know the bravery of Imam Ali, and they were prepared to fight with him. They know he's alone, so if there are hundreds of people or a thousand, two thousand people, they can kill him if he defend himself. And when they came and knocked the door, Fatima Du Zahra was behind the door. She said, what do you want from us? He said, either you come or I will burn the house. He said, you burn the house and we are in the house and this is a sacred house. And you know the respect of the prophet to the people of this house. He said, yes, I don't care. Even if you and Hassan and Hussein are in that house, I will burn the house. Again, she did not open the door. Then he said, in, in his story and said, he put the fire so the smoke was inside the house and some part of the door, actually it was a wooden boundaries, you know, if it burned, all will burn quickly. And then he tried the door, the lock of the door was not very strong. He tried to open the lock, but Fatima de Zara was defending that he should not open the door. He said that I break part of the door and I saw the Fatima de Zara is defending, so I striped her so that she will leave the door. And then when there is opening from the, with his sword, he attacked her on her side so that she will feel pain and leave the door. And then he said, when I opened the door, I saw she is defending Imam Ali and defending the door and they should not enter. And the why I said, I have seen even her ear pieces from behind the Qina. So he said, I slapped her so much that that ear piece fell on the ground. So to protect herself from me, she went behind the door. And he said, then I crushed her between the door and the wall. So much I pressed the door that she fell down unconscious. And later on, naturally, she aborted Al-Muhsin. Here Imam Ali السلام, when he saw them coming out, he came out and he took Omar by hand and crushed him on the ground. All the people ran away. They were afraid from Imam Ali. Then Imam Ali told him, oh Omar, if not, there is a will from the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I should not fight with you and I should not kill you. Otherwise you would have known that you are more coward than to attack my house. Omar here realized that Imam Ali is not fighting, not because he is thinking or waiting. There is a wasiyah, there is a will from the Prophet, an advice. If you did not get enough number of people to depend, to, to support you, do not fight with them. Be patient. So Imam Ali did not get 40 people to support him. That is why according to the will of the Prophet. Otherwise, he would have killed Omar right away there. So Omar called the people that come. He has a wasiyah, he will not fight. Now people realize if he's not fighting, naturally they came and caught Imam Ali and tied his hands. Zubair came out to fight and then his leg slapped there and he fell on the floor. They took his sword and again they tied him and they brought them to the mosque. Now, it was not that all sudden in the mosque it happened. It took a long time of argument and discussions. When Imam Ali came to the mosque, they told him, you have to do bay'ah. He said, well, if I will not do bay'ah, what will happen? They said, we will kill you. He said, then you are going to kill the Akha Rasulullah wa Ibn Ammi. I am the brother of the Prophet. They said, no, we do not confess you are a brother of the Prophet. Well, they know very well when the Holy Prophet made the brotherhood in Medina, he took Imam Ali as his brother, and that was very known fact. But they said, no, we deny that. We will not accept. And it is good to really go through some of the details here so that we know that how much 
details were there. Imam Ali alayhi salam repeated that, that will you kill Atajhaduna and Rasulullah Akha Baini wa Bainahu? Do you deny that the Prophet did brotherhood between me and him? Three times he asked them, they said, no, we will not. Then Imam Ali alayhi salam asked the Muslims, they said, aren't you a witness that the Prophet appointed me as a caliph in Ghadir Khum and also in the Battle of Tabuk when he said, Anta minni bi manzilati Arun Musa, in Battle of Tabuk and in many places. And he mentioned all the places where the Holy Prophet advised the Muslims that Imam Ali is the caliph after him. They said, yes, we know that. The people all confess. Well, the general people, they know these facts. They confess, yes, we know. Here, Abu Bakr was afraid that the people will support Imam Ali because Imam Ali changed the media against him and then he declared the facts they should know. And then Abu Bakr said a forged hadith. That I hear the Prophet in Ahlubayt in Istafan Allah, wa akramana wa akhtar lana al akhira ala al dunya, wa in Allah lam yakun liyajma lana ahl al bayt al khilafa wa al nubuwa. Abu Bakr said, I hear the Prophet that Allah has chosen us and He has selected us and He gave, he gave us akhirat, the hereafter, not this world. And Allah will not combine to us caliphate and Imamate, these two will not be there. Nubuwa, the prophethood, and Khilafah. So if the Prophet Muhammad is a prophet, a prophethood, let us say, from Bani Hashim, then the caliphate should not be in Bani Hashim, should be with other. That is meaning of what he say. Allah lam lan yajma' lana, wa inna Allah lam yakun liyajma' lana ahl al-bayt, an Nubuwa wal Khilafah. Allah will not give us the prophethood and caliphate. So Imam Ali said, well, he said, anybody of the companions of the Prophet who is witness for that, because that hadith is a forged hadith. And here Omar said, yes, I heard. Abu Ubaidah also said, yes. Salim, Mawla Abi Hudayfa said, yes. And Ma'ad ibn Jawal said, yes, we hear that. You see, they are now five. Abu Bakr, Omar. Salim Mawla Abu, Abu Abi Hudayfa, Ma'ad ibn Jabal, and Abu Ubaidah ibn Jarrah, these five. They said, yes, we have heard that hadith. Of course, that hadith is forged, we know. Later on, they forgot. When Umar appointed Imam Ali as one of six, that if they choose one among them, then he is a caliph. If Imam Ali do not deserve to be caliph because of the prophethood is in Ahlul Bayt, so he should not be, it has to be from, then how Omar appointed Imam Ali to be a candidate for caliphate? And they asked Imam Ali that why you have accepted, you know it is a plan of Omar so that Uthman will come. So he made a plan as six, but they know uh, the others will be with Uthman. Imam Ali said, I have accepted that to prove they were wrong when they said hadith that la tajtema'u al-nubu wal khilafa. Prophethood and caliphate will not be in among Ahlul Bayt. So I want to prove them they were wrong. No, now they forgot what they have said. So how he put me a candidate if he said the Prophet said not possible. If not possible, then how he put him a candidate? And then how the Muslims later on came after killing Uthman, they came and they said, Imam Ali is our Imam and the Caliph. If that hadith was wrong, was right, then how that would have happened? So you see, it is wrong. But here Imam Ali salam told them that you five were the one who wrote a letter, let us say a covenant among yourself, and you said, if Muhammad dies, la so here, Imam Ali said, I read it. لَقَدْ وَفَيْتُمْ بِصَحِيفَتِكُمْ الْمَلْعُونَ You were faithful to the cursed letter you have written. الَّتِي تَعَاقَدْتُمْ عَلَيْهَا فِي الْكَعْبَةِ That you have written it in Kaaba, in Mecca. 
And that is, in Qatalallahu Muhammadan, if Allah kills Muhammad, not the Prophet Muhammad, they have not used the Prophet or Messenger. In Qatalallahu Muhammadan, or mat or died, la tazwunna hadha al amr anna ahl al bayt. Then you will take away that issue, that issue means khilafat, from us ahl al bayt. So you five are the head of the people who want to take the khilafat from us, and you already have your own cursed covenant which written. Abu Bakr asked him that, how do you know we have not told you about it? Then Imam Ali السلام, said, you Zubair, and you Salman, and you Abu Dhar, and you Maqdad, four people. I asked you by Allah and by Islam, haven't you heard the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was telling, and you, was telling me and you here, that so and so and so mean these five, then he counted those five, they have written a letter among themselves and had a covenant that they will do this if I am dead or I am killed. So the Prophet already, well, naturally Allah has let him know what they did and he told Imam Ali and Zubair and Miqdad and Salman and Abu Dhar were witness. All of them said, yes, we have heard that from the Prophet. Then Imam Ali said, I said, Bi Abi anta wa ummi ya Rasulullah, may my father and mother be ransomed for you, O the Messenger of Allah. Fama ta'amuruni idha kana dhalik an af'al. What do you order me? If that is going to happen, what should I do? Faqala laka, then he told you. Then now these people are witnessing that فَقَالَ لَكَ He told to Imam Ali إِنْ وَجَدْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ أَعْوَانًا فَجَاهِدْهُمْ وَنَابِذْهُمْ If you have found supporters to help you to fight with them, then you fight with them. وَإِنْ أَنْتَ لَمْ تَجِدْ أَعْوَانًا فَبَايِعْ وَحْقِنْ دَمَكْ If you will not find supporters, then you pledge allegiance and reserve your blood. Reserve your blood means they will kill you, so you protect. So Imam Ali السلام, said, Amma wallah, I swear by Allah, if those 40 people who have done, who have pledged allegiance with me, they would have been honest and sincere, then I would have fight with you. And I will tell you that no, none of your descendants will get it till day of judgment. And there is ayah in the Holy Quran which says what you say is wrong. What you say is against the Quran. The Holy Quran said, أَمْ يَحْسَدُونَ النَّاسَ عَلَى مَا آتَاهُمُ اللَّهُ مِنْ فَضْلِهِ فَقَدْ آتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَآتَيْنَاهُمْ مُلْكًا عَظِيمًا So he said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in the Holy Quran, do they jealous the people for what we have given them from our favors? We have favored Al-Ibrahim, the progeny, the family of Ibrahim, the book, the wisdom, hikmah, and we have gave them a great kingdom. So he said, Al-Kitab, the book, is the prophethood. Well, hikmah is the wisdom. Uh, well, hikmah and the, the sunnah, that whatever they do is right sunnah. Well, mulk, mulk and azima, a great kingdom, naturally, mulk is khilafah, the caliphate. So how you said, the prophet said, Allah will not combine the prophethood and imamate for us. So that is not true. And Imam Ali said, wa nahnu alu Ibrahim. So here, Miqdad said, Oh, Ali, that if you order me, I will fight with them. Imam Ali said, no. Well, naturally, there were only four or five people with him. There is no enough supporters. And then Abu Dhar also talked in detail about that to the people, advised them. And then um, Salman, he talked in detail. Burayda al-Aslami, Burayda, uh, he talked also in detail about it. There is no time, you know, to discuss all that. And even Ummu Ayman, who was like a mother for the Prophet, she talked to Abu Bakr that, what a quickly you have shown your jealousy and hypocrisy uh, and 
now what you are doing with Ahlul Bayt, that is the thing. So, again, they forced Imam Ali. They said, either you do bayat or we'll kill you. He said, then if I will not do, they said, again, we will kill you. Again, three times he asked them, they said, we will kill you. Then Imam Ali extended his hand, but it was closed. The Ruhayah said, ثُمَّ مَدَّ يَدَهُ مِنْ أَنْ مِنْ غَيْرِ أَنْ يَفْتَحَ كَفَّ He did not open the hand, he closed the hand. Abu Bakr hit his hand of Imam Ali with his hand, and then said, oh, Ali did the bayat finish, that is all sufficient. And then they left Imam Ali, and then they asked Zubair also for the bayat, and then Salman and Abu Dakar, or Abu Bakr, or, uh, Abu Dhar, and Mughdad, all of them were by, by force bayat. Here, Zubair were not expecting really that to happen and did not tolerate. He told Omar, Ibn Sahak, O oh, son of Sahak. Now, Omar realized while well, he is criticizing him with his grandmother, because the grandmother was not doing a lawful act. He said, do you talk to me like this? He said, why not? Your grandmother was a slave for my grandfather, for Abdul Muttalib. And your grandfather was illegitimate. And that was Nufail, a slave also who did adultery with her. And then your father was born. You don't know that. Now you are coming and fighting with me and forcing me to do it. Who are you and who are? We are Bani Hashim. We are from Abdul Muttal. Anyhow, by force, all of them were brought for, for bayat. So what I mean, these are some of the details. And then history, more and more details were there. So it was not a matter that happened very quickly, very quietly. A lot of details were there. Uh, but ultimately, Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha, remained suffering. She was not telling Imam Ali what happened to her. Because she said, if she tell Imam Ali about her chest and about slapping her on her face that affected her eye and her eye was red, then Imam Ali would get more sorrow and more pain. So when she used to sit with Imam Ali at home, she closed one of the eye not to see her eye, just turned down. One day Imam Ali, alayhi salam, looked to her eye and he saw her eye are red like a clot of a blood. He said, oh, Fatima, what happened to your eye? Then here Fatima to Zahra has to tell him what happened that he said, he, that Dalim, he slapped me and with his slap that happened to my eye. Well, Imam Ali alayhi salam, because he was ordered to have a patience and tolerance, actually he's a great jihad, is jihad of sabr for the sake of Islam. And she remained sick, salamullah alayha. She was weeping day and night at home. And now the people realize that that will show her dhulama that oppression has done to her and the people will know. So they said, Ya Ali, ask Fatima either she should cry in the day or in the night, not day and night. When Imam Ali came to her, she said, even crying for my father is not allowed. I am not allowed to cry for my father. My father is the messenger of Allah, and that is the biggest loss for the humanity. He said, well, these people are forcing me for that. Then Imam Ali, brought, she used to go to Baqiyah. There was a tree, Shajaratul Arak, Arake, and she used to cry there, and the women used to come there. And they came, then they cut that tree so that there is no shadow for her. Then Imam Ali built her a small house called Baytul Ahzan. She used to be there crying till the end of her life. One day, Imam Ali was in the mosque. She addressed Imam Hassan and Hussein. She washed their body and dressed them and sent them to the mosque to offer the prayer and told Asma, Asma was dear to Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha. She was before 
wife of Ja'far ibn Abi Talib, brother of Imam Ali, and when he was martyred, then Abu Bakr married her, and she had her son Muhammad, who was later on one of the great supporters of Imam Ali alayhi salam, Muhammad ibn Abi Bakr, and Muawiyah killed him in Egypt and burned him in the skin of a donkey. You know, now he's son of Abu Bakr, and Muawiyah did all that to him, but nobody cares about that history, unfortunately. So she told Asma that, yeah, Asma, I'm going to my room and I'm reciting Quran. If my sound is low, come and call me. If I replied, then it is okay. If not, then know that my soul has gone to heaven. Asma said, I was at the door and I hearing, was hearing Fatima to Zahra, salamu alayha, reciting Surah Yasin, and suddenly her sound was Quiet. I came and called Ya Binta Rasulullah, O daughter of the Messenger of Allah. She did not reply. Second time, third time, she did not reply. I came and pushed her to see if she is alive or not. But then I realized that she has died. Salamullah alayha. I came out and I was at a situation, don't know what to do. Suddenly, Imam Hassan and Imam Hussein, they were children at age of six and seven, they came and they said, oh Asma, where is our mother? I told them, oh my masters, come and eat your food. Your mother is sleeping. They said, yeah Asma, when we were eating food without our mother? And how come our mother is sleeping at this time? This is not the time for her sleeping. They came inside their room and they found their mother there, Imam Hassan on the right side, Imam Hussein on the left side. Imam Hassan called his mother, Ummah Kalimini, and I Hassan. Oh, my mother, talk to me. I am your son, Hassan. But there was no reply. Imam Hussein talked to her. There was no reply. And then they talked to each other that it looks our mother has died. They came out from the house to the mosque crying. The people saw them crying. He said, Oh, grandsons of the Prophet, why you are crying? Have you remembered death of your grandfather, the Holy Prophet? They said, no, our mother has died. Imam Ali, when he heard that, he came hurriedly to the house and started preparing her funeral. But because she has said that she has to be buried at night, Imam Ali kept the time till night and then asked the people to go. And he said, well, the burial of Fatima is delayed. So the people thought delayed means till tomorrow. And everybody has gone. At the heart of the night, Imam Ali salam, was giving ghusl to Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha. And Asma used to help him with water. Asma said, suddenly I saw Imam Ali left the washing Fatima the Zahra and sit aside crying. She said, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen, why you are you crying? Are you crying because of death of Fatima the Zahra? He said, no, Asma, though her death is very great and painful to me. But now when I was doing her washing, I felt one of her ribs is broken and she was hiding that from me so that my sorrow will not increase. And now I realize how much she has suffered and she did not tell me about that. Then when he finished the bathing Fatima to Zahra, he asked Imam Hassan and Hussein, Ya Hassan, Ya Hussein, Ya Zainab, Ya Umma Kulthum, come and have a farewell with your mother. Imam Hassan was in one side, Imam Hussein other side, and they cried, Tell Imam Ali said, I heard a sound from heaven, Ya Ali, nahihuma faqad abkaya malaikat as sama Oh Ali, take them away. The angels in heaven, they are crying. Imam Ali had taken them away and then completed the kafan and then buried Fatima to Zahra, salamullah alayha, at night. And then he sat on the grave, writing by his fingers, the kullijtima'in, 
من خليلين فرقة وكل الذي دون الممات قليل وأن افتقادي فاطما بعد أحمد دليل على أن لا يدوم خليل إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون وسيعلم الذين ظلموا أي منقلب ينقلبون والعاقبة للمتقين اللهم إنا نسألك وندعوك بجلال وجهك الكريم وقرآنك العظيم وبمحمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين أن تعجل فرج وليك صاحب العصر والزمان وأن تجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه ومن المجاهدين بين يديه اللهم اكشف هذه الغمة عن هذه الأمة اللهم اجعل بلاد المسلمين آمنة في كل مكان اللهم اقضي حوائجنا اللهم يسر مطالبنا اللهم ارحم موتانا اللهم اشفي مرضانا اللهم لا تسلط علينا من لا يرحمنا اللهم احرسنا بحراستك واكلانا بكلاءتك وارحمنا برحمتك اللهم اجمعنا مع محمد وآل محمد يوم القيامة في أعلى عليين مع الشهداء والصالحين وحسن أولئك رفيقا وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات خصوصا إلى روح الشهيد حجة الإسلام والمسلمين السيد مهدي الحكيم وتصادف هذه الليلة ليلة شهادة الزهراء سلام الله عليها ليلة دفنه إلى روحي وأرواح شهداء الإسلام وعلماء الأعلام وأرواح موتى الحاضرين جميعا رحم الله من يقرأ الفاتحة قبلها صلوات